This is a case study on Cisco Systems regarding their collaborative leadership progression. Um, it comes from the text, Linkage Inc.'s Best Practices in Leadership Development Handbook, 2nd Edition, with editors Guyber, Lamb, Goldsmith, and Burke. Uh, this is copyright 2009, published by Pfeiffer out of San Francisco, California. Uh, my name is Greg Campbell. I'm a student at Mercer University, and I'll be conducting and reviewing this case study. So a little bit about the company Cisco Systems. Uh, for your reference, this is in Chapter 11 of the text. Cisco, I pulled up their 2015 annual report and some general information on the organization. They are headquartered out of San Jose, California. And in 2015, Cisco celebrated their 30th year in business. Um, they also had revenues for the year of $49.2 billion, so a large corporation, and net income of 18.1% of revenue. And that $49.2 billion was 4% uh, greater than 2014 revenues. So outperformed um, a, a lot of large organizations in regards to growth in the year of 2015. 71,883 employees at the fiscal year end of 2015. What I thought was interesting is that uh, a U.S.-based company out of San Jose, California, um, only 50% of those 72,000 employees are based out of the United States. Cisco is a global company um, by all measures, and half of its employees are international. So we're going to be going through the case analysis process um, and looking at the different segments of a case study analysis. Those segments include uh, business diagnosis, an assessment, program design, implementation, and on-the-job support, and evaluation. So starting off with the business diagnosis, I do have some excerpts from the text. Um, I didn't see the reason to try to re-articulate some things out of the text that were um, stated quite well. So to start things off with an excerpt out of the text, as Cisco enters new markets and new services, one of the first changes has been to the soft structure of the company. It's the largest functionally organized technology company in existence. So Cisco recognized that in order to remain viable, in a very dynamic and rapidly changing global industry, they needed to change the mindset of their leadership. Um, so they weren't talking about a change in the organizational chart. They were talking about a leadership paradigm shift. The objective was to create a collaborative leadership culture instead of leaders of the organization focusing on the successes of their respective functions and business units as their primary focus and their primary measures of success. Cisco Systems wanted its leaders to operate in a collaborative environment across the entire organization for the success of the entire company being the focus. So the primary objective was to collaborate for the greater good and the common cause of the organization and not necessarily what might look best in one particular business unit. Moving on to the assessment phase. The desired outcome was collaborative leadership. So in order to start down the path of creating that, first Cisco had to define what it meant by collaborative leadership. And in order to define really collaborative leadership and what that meant, they had to create a competency model that would clearly define all the, the different competencies that went into collaborative leadership. So. Another excerpt from the text, this model embedded within each of Cisco's leadership efforts would effectively establish a common understanding and appreciation for the leadership traits associated with success in the company. 
So out of this, the C-LEAD model was born. C-LEAD is an acronym for the leadership framework, the leadership foundation, the leadership paradigm shift for the Cisco system company. Um, and it stands for, that acronym represents C, create, L, learn, E, execute, A, accelerate, and D, disrupt. So this C lead model becomes the foundation to everything that Cisco Systems will see does from a leadership development and strategy standpoint. Leadership Team designed seven operating guidelines for the C-LEAD model. <clears throat> Number one, focus on differentiating for the future. So, Cisco system, Systems understood um, and believed that they needed to focus on differentiations not only in their products and their outputs in their organization, but in their leadership style. And in order to set themselves apart in the future, the C-LEAD model needed to create a leadership differentiation in the marketplace. Secondly, align Cisco culture and leadership expectations. The model needed to respect the history of the company and its culture, and at the same time, be pr provocative about leadership and innovation needs in the future. Number three, establish a common language for leadership. We talked about Cisco being a global company. The model, at a minimum, needed to provide a common language for leadership around the globe, regardless of the function or theater. The core principles of leadership needed to mean the same thing everywhere in the organization. Number four, and one that um, I took personal note of, reliably predict success in leadership roles. So the model was created not only to guide how Cisco expected leaders behave, but also to predict future leadership success. And the ability to predict the success of a leader prior to putting them into a leadership role, uh, I think is invaluable. Number five, develop intelligence about Cisco's leadership pipeline. You know, the larger that an organization gets, the more difficult it is for the decision makers in that or organization to be aware of all the talent within the organization. The model needed to be leveraged to identify high potential emerging leaders. So that was a core competency of the C-LEAD model. Number six, facilitate internal searches and deployment of talent. So the model needed to assist management with deploying talent, especially in critical or linchpin positions. We wanted future leadership capability aligned to the most critical strategic priority. So Cisco Systems wanted a core competency of this model to be whatever significant strategic opportunities were identified to be able to take the best people within the organization to apply those people and their efforts um, collaboratively to that particular strategic need. Number seven, inform development programs and other investments. The leadership model would inform and align all training and development activities for managers and leaders. Moving on to program design. <clears throat> the methodology for developing C-LEAD needed to be robust enough for the business to adopt, yet practical enough to develop in a timely fashion. Our primary goal was to leverage the organizational leaders throughout the design phase so that at the end of the process, we could ultimately say that C-LEAD was designed both by and for these leaders. So there is a four-step process um, in this program design that also feeds into an existing process and we add a step of measuring impact. So starting with step one, best practices review. Um, the C-LEAD process, um, when, when they looked at best practices, practices review, they looked at leadership literature for insight. And specifically, they looked at the Corporate Leadership Council's research, research on executive competencies. Um, they also looked at two years worth of Harvard Business Review articles uh, on the evolution of leadership to look for patterns. And 
they relied on that information in order to um, understand and set some best practice benchmarks for the leadership development. Step two, senior leader interviews. So they really ask two questions of each leader. What are the key challenges leaders will face based on current strategy and direction? And what capabilities will differentiate successful leaders in this context? And the answers to those questions help to guide the development process. Step three, collaborating with the organization. So hundreds of managers and leaders provided input into the leadership model. And this leveraged, leveraged the collaborative methods and technologies of the organization. You know, Cisco being the nature of their business, they were able to get the impact uh, or the feedback um, and the resulting impact of their global employee base. So they were able to utilize their own technology that they're out marketing to be able to bring people together and network um, and provide a global feedback forum. Step four, engaging the operating committee. <clears throat> so um, the text states both the model and the business case for change were taken to the operating committee, which is comprised of most senior decision makers for review, discussion, and adoption. As the executive sponsor of the shift to collaborative leadership, the CEO is the primary sponsor. Moving on from engaging the operating committee is leveraging an existing um, program, which is that it carries an acronym of EALF, and EALF is the Executive Action Learning Forum. Um, and this was launched in the fall of 2007, and we'll get into more of the specifics on what that program is, but really we'll learn that C-LEAD is the cultural foundation and EALF is the structural framework for which measurable outcomes can be produced through this change in organizational and leadership development. And finally, uh, the seed lead process measures the impact um, of the program and the, e the EALF projects. So program design, the education. Executive Action Learning Forum, EALF. So like I said, CLEAF provides the leadership architecture and the foundation for the collaborative leadership model, but EALF is where the theory moves to practice. The text states, the forum provides high potential leaders with the opportunities to accelerate the development of their general management and collaborative leadership skills by working on projects of high strategic importance to Cisco. Moving on to the implementation and on-the-job support phases, which I've combined in this presentation. C-LEAD, -Lead, again, is the cultural framework. EALF is the action arm. When significant strategic business opportunities are identified, an EALF project begins. So here are the elements of an EALF project. Number one, an executive assessment and development planning tool is created. Now these are customized to the project and to the leaders involved to make them most effective. Number two, collaborative assignments that bring together diverse leaders from all across the organization are created. So these have a dual purpose. They're intended to both serve the mission of solving the problem and also serve the mission of developing the individuals involved. Number three, coaching and mentoring support is established. Each participant is assigned an internal coach that's suited to the individual and the business need. The text states, coaches play a significant role in the three important ways. One, they conduct the assessment feedback session and consult with the executive to translate feedback into a robust development plan. Two, they provide ongoing feedback throughout the action learning forum with the goal of sustaining the developmental changes. And three, they partner with executives after the action learning forum with the goal of sustaining the developmental changes. The fourth step, executive exposure opportunities are established. So this is really, really where they get the opportunity, the participants of the EALF program to be involved with senior executives um, and get their insight um, to understand their thinking and get the overall beneficial exposure to working with senior level executives. So, 
what does an EALF session look like? What does an EALF project look like? Well, first and foremost, at Cisco is comp comprised of 15 VPs or senior VPs identified as high potential leaders. Participants are divided into two teams and challenged to design solutions to strategy opportunities through collaboration. The text states, to help participants navigate through the stress and pressure of the experience, an extensive network is put into place to provide support for the project teams. The support team is made up of subject matter experts, executive development coaches, technology advisors, business leaders, and team facilitators. The extensive use of technologies and tools enables the teams to complete projects in a collaborative form around the globe with minimal disruption to their normal business day. So each session, session is 12 to 16 weeks, um, and there are five components of an EALF session. Self-directed learning being the first, residents being the second, strategy project being the third, project presentation being the fourth, and evaluation being the fifth. So during the self-directed learning, this is really where participants are provided with educational information, white papers uh, relative to the project they're going to be working on in order to get some foundational learning and understanding. The second phase is the residents. This is where they all come together for four days um, and the program focuses on providing the participants with the tools to be successful in the project. So they're not trying to solve the problem during this four days. What they're trying to do is to make sure that the participants have the tools that they need to be successful. So that they're schooled in the areas of business strategy, uh, disruptive innovation, and the disciplines of collaborative leadership. Next is the strategy project. And for the next six weeks, the participants work in small strategy teams to work on solutions. Each team is assigned a facilitator and has full access to any and all resources needed to successfully complete the project. And I think that that's key, is that these teams are not only empowered, but they're given the, the resources needed to complete the projects. And I think in a lot of business environments, people, uh, we, we tell people that they're empowered um, and we want them to be successful, but ultimately there are some restrictions on the resources that they have access to. Next is the project presentation, and this is self-explanatory. This is where, at the conclusion of the EALF session, the participants present their business plans to the operating committee um, in another in-residence setting where they all come together. And finally, the evaluation. So each small strategy team is evaluated on a number of items. Uh, of course, they're evaluated on the quality and the output of the project, so how well they solve the problem. But outside of the outputs, they're evaluated on the C-lead competencies and how they demonstrated those through the project. And that moves us on to the evaluation phase. Cisco measures the impact of the EALF session by answering two questions. Was a business strategy launched by virtue of the rapid prototyping methodology used for new strategies and business models? So, in layman's terms, did we create a strategy to realize the strategic opportunity that has been identified? The second question, did leaders elevate their understanding and capability to lead as collaborative leaders? And again, in layman's terms, this is, did the people that we put on this project demonstrate the C-Lead values and they, did they increase in their demonstration of the competency of those values? The Cisco organization has put together a very comprehensive collaborative leadership program. It has taken a large organization and made a complete leadership paradigm shift, um, which is a significant task. And I think it's something that many organizations, if not all organizations, can look at and learn something from. Thank you.